Hi everyone, good morning and thank you for joining our second Coffee Break CDP FAQ session. I'm Dot, I'm the Marketing Manager Emir and India at Treasure Data. I have New Brookman here with me today. He's our Director of Solution Engineering. Very similar to our last session, we are going to address some of the most asked questions on CDP. And today we're focusing on identity resolution, data and consent. Same as last week's session, the questions we've put on the screen today are some real questions that we've received from our previous webinars. As today is a live session, please send us your questions along the way and we'll try to address them at the end. We'll get back to you offline if we do run out of time. Also, if you want to check out our last session on CDP versus DMP versus CRM, replace or leverage, drop us a message and we'll send you the link to the video. I know we're going to uh, run through a lot today, so shall we start, Neil? Of course, sounds good. Great. So diving into the first question, would there be any concerns with matching when activating CDP audiences in DSP for programmatic advertising? Uh, so the, there's no intermediary between a CDP and a DSP. So what that means is if the DSP ID for the profile has been retrieved when browsing their own brand websites, the profile would be able to be targeted through the DSP. And additionally, you can get first party data on borders, companies like LiveRamp, and they can be integrated into the CDP. And in that case, the match rate of CDP audiences reachable by DSPs would be dependent on the on-border match rate. So we, we can assist with that matching either directly from their own websites or through a, a tool like LiveRamp. Right, that's great to know. Does the CDP automatically do identity matching? Are there any ways to improve the matching rates? Uh, so the answer is yes. So CDPs can match identities to create a single view uh, or a single record for a customer. And CDPs like Treasure Data can do both deterministic and probabilistic matching. So deterministic will match records on a defined attribute or set of attributes. And this will allow you to merge identities from multiple sources into a single record. So you need to ensure that your CDP can use first party cookies as well as other system identifiers to do matching and not have any limitations. With probabilistic matching, that will use algorithms to match records. So the more data you can store in the CDP and use that for probabilistic matching, the higher your matching rate will become. And how do you deal with multiple cookies for the same user? So most good CDPs will allow multiple identifiers to be stored against a user record. So you can link all records with multiple cookie IDs to the same user record. So as soon as a user identifies themselves, you can then match that cookie to the user record and wire up all of their anonymous sessions to become part of the known user record. And when someone's identifying themselves, it could just simply be entering an email address. It could be that they've logged in. They could have clicked on a link from an email or any other way to determine who the user is. And if a user doesn't identify themselves, then that user will be treated as an anonymous user until they do. And again, that cookie will then be associated with the user record. Right. Oh, sorry, I went up too far. Um, how do you do the matching? Does the CDP do that automatically? Currently, we use a matching table in BigQuery to match GA IDs with our IDs. Uh, so this is a, a fairly specific question we had previously. So for just uh, people on the call that don't know, um, BigQuery is Google BigQuery. That's Google's fully managed cloud data warehouse. And GA is Google Analytics. So um, a matching can be done automatically in a CDP. So effectively, you're sending events to the CDP and the events have an identifier. So for example, it could be a cookie and that is used to link all of those events together. Some events will include information to match the user with a record, such as a user ID, an email address or something else. And the CDP then links the cookie ID with the user record in the CDP. That user record will also hold information to match to other systems, like an email address to match with your ESP. It could be a DMP ID. It could be a user ID to match with your customer identity platform. And you can also pass the GA ID 
along with the CDP cookie ID or your identifier using a JavaScript SDK. And that will then automatically link the two identifiers and the CDP will then store that GA ID against a user record for matching. And alternatively, you can build a matching table directly in the CDP rather than doing it in BigQuery. And that will allow you to match the GA IDs with internal IDs as you do now, but doing it in the CDP rather than BigQuery. How important is one row records to distinguish between the CDP and DMP? So um, one record in your CDP is a persistent record. It can be attributes or it could be a behavior and things that are stitched to a user profile. And it may be used at any time to either segment and build audiences or be passed to your downstream activation channels. Whereas a single row in a DMP is an anonymous digital activity and that will be linked to anonymous session that doesn't last for very long. And that's due to time storage limitations in a DMP. So in, in that sense, a DMP row record is less important than a CDP record. Great. Would you say that uh, identity alignment is the primary and most important benefit of a CDP? And if so, how do you review or assess the different CDP in this space when trying to choose the one that would be suitable for your business? Uh, so identity alignment um, is key and uh, it, it is the, the sort of the technically the primary benefit of a CDP to build those single view of customer. And to do that, deterministic matching is much better than using probabilistic matching as you can be 100% sure that the records are for the same user. So therefore, you need to look at different source systems and you need to ensure that your CDP can match on all IDs across the system. So again, this could be email address, it could be system identifiers, cookies, or any other attribute. So be sure that your CDP can store all of those IDs and use all of them for identity resolution. Otherwise, you end up with a, a partial single customer view and multiple records for the same user. You mentioned in the presentation uh, PII for personal identified information. It's only available in CDP, correct? And to get this information, you must have the consent from the user through opt-in in Europe because of GDPR and opt-out in California. Is that right? Uh, so that's not technically right. So you, you have multiple systems that can be a source of PII data. So it could be your website registration, your CRM, your call center. Uh, but tools like a DMP are not able to use the PIA da PII data due to security. So a CDP will allow PII to be safely stored due to all of the uh, security of the platform. And this PII data can be used to do segmentation or it could be passed downstream to your activation channels. And you do need to ensure you have consent to use PII data and you need to ensure you have the consent to use it for each purpose for GDPR compliance. So as mentioned in the question, you do need to get explicit opt-in for each purpose to be GDPR compliant, and you cannot use opt-out or implied consent. Okay, then you need um, to add a consent management platform to this, is that right? Does a CDP also manage the user consent? So you, you don't necessarily need to use a consent management platform to do this, as you can collect consent from any and many sources, and your CDP will centrally store that. So you could collect consent directly on your website. It could be collected through mobile apps, through your call center. It could be physical documents or, or any other means. So your CDP will then store this consent centrally and ensure uh, that you are, are compliant in all of your downstream systems. So if somebody uh, doesn't give consent for email, then you wouldn't send the, the relevant data to your ESP. And um, if they haven't given consent for personalization, don't send it to your personalization engine. So you can also use a, a consent management tool like a OneTrust or a Gigia and integrate those tools directly into your CDP. Some CDPs will allow you to capture and manage consent directly in the CDP, but not all of them will have that capability. So you do need to ensure that your CDP is able to store and use data in real time and be able to store the fine grained consent 
and also to have that additional metadata such as a timestamp and channel collected that is a requirement to be GDPR compliant. But you also need to have a, a mechanism to collect consent. So something like a web form in your website and you need to allow a user to manage or remove their consent. So you then need a mechanism to capture and manage the consent in all of your apps and then send it to the CDP for storage. And this is where a consent management platform will make it simpler and make it more secure to do the capture, uh, all of the management and storage and can then also be the source of truth for consent. So just to summarize, um, you don't need to add a consent management platform, uh, but it will probably make life a, a little bit easier. Right, thank you very much, Neil. Um, I think we should wait for maybe 10 to 20 seconds to see if there's any question that comes in. Um, like I said, because this is a live session, so please do feel free to send us any question and we'll address them now. Or well, whilst we wait, um, Neil, have you come across any specific questions on data whilst um, outside of the webinar? Uh, so, I mean, a, a lot of people um, are, are, and a lot of the questions we see are around sort of building that single view of customer and, and sort of how a CDP helps with that. So I, I like to talk about a, a CDP sort of like a, a hub spoke model. So the CDP is, is central connected to all of your systems, but you wouldn't uh, write data directly in the CDP. So you're collecting data from all of your source systems and uh, aggregating it all and building that single customer view. So you need to ensure your CDP can do that matching across all systems. And then uh, once it's done the matching to then connect to do like outbound, to push that data with any of the data science and machine learning scores that you have to your downstream systems. So the identity resolution is very key. The ability to store all of your data to give you a true uh, single view of customer and also to be able to manage that consent and have that in real time. So if somebody removes consent, then it's removed immediately and then that's passed to your downstream systems. So the, the CDP becomes critical in your infrastructure and it's there as a, a sort of, as I say, a hub spoke to bridge all of your different systems. Yeah, I do think um, we've come across a lot of um, prospects and clients that they, they are constantly struggling with data and um, consent and how, how do they actually do the matching rates and we've seen a lot of questions around that. So thank you very much for all the answers today. Um, we haven't picked up any questions just, just yet, um, but please do feel free um, to send your questions to dorothy.chong at treasuredata.com and um, we'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Next week, we're going to talk about why less data isn't more. And if you're interested, please sign up from the link below. And thank you so much, Neil, and um, hope you all uh, have a good day and hope to see you next week. Thanks, everybody. All right, take care. Thank you.